Welcome to TechWizard, the Dahmer. In this video, we are going to learn how to create CSV files in Blob Storage from all the tables from one of the SQL Server database that's existing on your on-prem system. So this is a, one of the scenario, I mean, often we have to deal with the, when you want to migrate your SQL Server uh, on-prem system database tables to maybe uh, create the CSV files on the Blob and then use them as a staging or some other scenarios. So uh, first of all, what we need here, we are going to use self-hosted.ir and that's what you need. You need to watch my previous video, how to create this self-hosted.ir. So once we have the self-hosted.ir, what it will be doing, it will be able to read between two different networks. So, so we have already installed the self-hosted.ir on our machine and uh, that's my self-hosted.ir service that is running on my laptop. Now what's happening, I have a SQL Server right here that's my on-prem or local on my uh, laptop here there are multiple databases uh, we have uh, one of that is called the tech browsers uh, and uh, that has some tables uh, so it has like a uh, five tables and uh, what we are going to do we are going to do everything dynamic so we don't have to provide uh, like let's say tomorrow customer has only uh, right now uh, only three columns uh, maybe tomorrow customer will have five columns you know so i'm going to do any everything as a dynamic so whatever the columns uh, these tables has it uh, it should create the csv file uh, according to that so you can see right there are different data types and uh, there are different uh, type of columns and then we have a uh, uh, a lot of other you know different columns in each of uh, the different table now what we need to do here i'm going to go to the azure data uh, portal sorry not data <laughs> azure portal and here is my resource group and uh, one of the storage i have created is called the tech browser it storage and uh, here i have some containers and one of the containers is called input so we will be loading all the files here so uh, let's start what we need first of all we need uh, the data factory right so i already have a data factory here and uh, in the data factory we need self-hosted ir configured and that we have configured in the last video and uh, let's go to this uh, right here so you are going to go to the manage and uh, once we go to manage we are going to see integration runtime and uh, here you are seeing that self-hosted ir that's the uh, let's click on that one and now you can see the node so this is a uh, using one of the node that's my local computer and uh, that's where it is uh, uh, configured so we all set uh, we should be able to read the data from our on-premises to the azure uh, blob storage or to uh, azure uh, database or any other uh, destination uh, we can just write it there now what we need here we need linked services so i am gonna create the link surface on the fly when we go to the pipeline i can go uh, and do it here i already have actually linked services but uh, I want to show you from the scratch so you can follow along let's go to the author here and then we are going to go to the pipeline and create a new pipeline now I'm going to call this pipeline let's call this pipeline so PL on prem to blob okay so that's going to work just fine and uh, give a very nice name first of all we need to read the list of the tables so if you guys remember that you know those system tables are there that can provide us the list of the uh, tables in the database so i'm going to go ahead and uh, let me use this uh, new query here and in the new query i'm going to say select star from um sister tables right there so these are all system uh, uh, tables available for us that can give us uh, different uh, um, information uh, such as a system says that tables is that views and all those kind of things uh, and what we need here we need only the name if you have different schema or something I mean maybe you want to use it but in my case uh, I don't have it so I'm going to just use a name also you can use a filter here so you can use a where clause where my table name table name uh, table name in you can maybe just to provide two table names or three or whatever so in my case what i'm going to do i'm going to use all the table but in your case you can always select the list what you want to do and then uh, uh, you uh, create the csv files for them so i'm going to copy this uh, statement here let's go to the our azure data factory and uh, here what we need look up so look up is going to read this list of the table names and then uh, we are going to loop through those tables by using for each loop now in the lookup i'm going to call this one get table list okay so from where it is need to read the, the list of the table from the on premises remember uh, we we are going to go to settings and here i'm going to say 
new data set and here I will say SQL so SQL server select that and now what we can do we can provide the data set names here maybe just call the uh, tech brothers IT and uh, then uh, we have to there are there is already linked service created but I'm gonna create a new one so you can see what exactly is happening hit uh, create new and uh, then we are gonna provide name L and K tech brothers IT on prem okay so that's what we'll use here you are gonna use uh, uh, self hosted IR and then uh, we are gonna provide the server name so we go to the server name here and here we are going to say select the red red server name sorry server name now execute that and uh, just to let you know once uh, you do that uh, you also need a permission so i already have created a user and uh, that user is called the tb user and uh, this is a sql user and i just provided the the password to it and uh, then in permissions uh, I have given permission on all the databases uh, so I actually gave him sysadmin but in your case uh, you might want to give to only the specific uh, uh, database and tables whatever you needed okay so I'm, I'm in my case I'm good I'm gonna go provide the server name here then uh, uh, I'm gonna say tech brothers IT and SQL authentication is just fine TB user and my password for that user so let me make a little small so you can see right there so let's a test connection and the test should be successfully con completed and we are all good so this is how you will create the linked service to your on-premises sql server now that's all good and here it is in, in hey do you want to select a database a table name no in my case i don't want to care about it because remember we need to use the query so here i'm going to hit okay and we are going to go right here let me expand this here and you're going to select a query so we are in the lookup so here we have to provide the query i'm going to go back to the ssms and here is my query that will give me the list of the tables go back here paste now what you can do you can preview data if you want so it's going to just grab a list of the tables here so um, tech versus it yep so that's fine but why it is giving me only one table so it uh, maybe just in the preview it it is providing one table i don't know maybe it's just, oh okay I, I see what is happening here so we go right here see first row only that's actually first row. <laughs> that's what you want to get rid of it because you we are going to read all the rows so now if i do preview it's going to get me a list of all those table names okay now we have the list of the table names and we are all good next part what we are going to do we are going to loop through this uh, list of the tables so we need for each loop so for each loop we are going to grab that here and then we are going to connect our lookup to the for each loop click here to the for each loop and now what we are going to do we are going to go to the settings and here you are going to go to this property okay so you will say add dynamic content click here and then you're going to select your lookup when the, this is activity that's our lookup activity and then we will say dot value so what it will do it will give us the list of all those uh, table names and we are all good here and then uh, inside that uh, what we are going to do we are going to use a copy activity so click on that pencil sign and here we are going to bring a copy activity now let's configure the copy activity go to source uh, now you're going to go to the data set uh, and here remember that what we need to use we need to read the data from the sql server that's our on-prem sql server not the azure or anything we are going to go to sql server straight hit uh, okay and here we can call it uh, tb whatever you want to call it to give it a proper name and here a uh, link service uh, that we created uh, so we are pointing to that one and now it is connected by using the self-hosted ir that's good do you want to use a table name here so if you guys want to use the table name fine but remember our table name is changing so we don't really need to use table name here i'm gonna go hit okay so now our uh, source is ready but we have to do few things here as uh, we did not provide any table we have to go to the open and in the open uh, we are going to do one thing we are going to create a variable and call uh, sorry parameter and call it a table name so table name and this table name pa parameter will be used here so we are going to click uh, right here on edit and uh, it's going to say okay what schema you need to read 
um, I mean, my case, a DBO is the schema, but here I will provide that uh, parameter. So I'm going to choose uh, the table name parameter. As of now, this uh, table name parameter is not really getting value from anywhere, but it is the change in, uh, so from the source, it's going to go to the table name, whatever the value is in the parameter. Now we have to go back to the our pipeline and here see that table name parameter appeared so now I have to map the value from our for each loop to the this parameter so I'm gonna click on add dynamic content and here I'm gonna go to the for each loop right here and then item dot name so see remember that we have the value and we saved the dot name column so that's that's where it is coming see right there this is the name I'm talking about Okay, so this is all good now, and uh, now it is saying, hey, you want to read from the table? Yes, I would like to read from the table, and uh, if you want to do further, uh, you know, uh, something in the, this whole thing, you can always uh, write a query, you write a store procedure, and all that, so there are tons of possibilities. In my case, I'm fine with that, so I'm going to get the list of the tables by using lookup, provide to the for each loop, then use the copy activity. Inside that copy activity, I'm using that table name so uh, it can uh, loop through and then I'm good. Now I'm gonna go to the sync uh, and here I'm gonna go to the sync data set, create a new data set and uh, it's gonna be blob storage because I would like to create the CSV files, remember? Azure blob storage, click on that and then now CSV files, so delimited text. Yes. Now here we can provide the name uh, and uh, I can call it uh, output uh, CSV. So CSV. Okay. So uh, anytime, whatever you want to give the name, give a proper name. Uh, mostly I will say, always say start with DS underscore your data name. And now you need to create the link service. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and create a new one. Why? Because I would like to show you. So here is my blob storage one, give a proper name you know, and the, I, I might call it input. So then uh, it is telling me in the blob storage, uh, you know, actually you not really because uh, uh, it is just going to point to the blob storage and uh, uh, what's going to happen then you have to choose the container later. So linked service is not pointing to the for container level. It's going to be just pointing to the a blob storage. Okay, so connect via integration runtime. You can do that or you can use self-hosted IR as this is on the uh, cloud, you don't really need to use a self-hosted IR here. You can always use a, a auto resolve integration runtime or any Azure IR if you have. But this is going to be working just fine as well. So now what we do, select subscription and then uh, you're going to choose uh, the storage account name. In my case, uh, if you guys remember, this is the storage account I have. And let me go back and you guys see that tech, not here, the other one. So tech browser IT storage, that's my storage, right? So I choose that one. And now I'm gonna go ahead and test connection and it should be just fine. Connection successfully tested, let's still go ahead and create it. And now inside that, once we go to the data set, we have to tell like on which container you would like to create those CSV files. I'm gonna go ahead and navigate to that, to one of the input folder and here, I do not have any files, so I'm gonna hit OK. And uh, now, if you guys see there, I'm not providing any directory further inside. If I need to, I can, but I'm not really, I don't care about that. And I'm not also providing file name. Yes, first row as header, okay? Now, this is what's gonna happen. Now, I can leave a import schema if you wanna do it, or just leave to none, because I don't really need to import schema and use it somewhere here and there. So I'm gonna just be all right. So now you see if we go to the open and hear what is happening. Now we can go and change column delimited. We can change different settings. First row has header, you know, how to deal with the null value, how to use, you know, different other other parts. So there are tons of variety you have to, you know, to create your CSV file. And uh, if you notice that I still did not provide any uh, file name or anything like that, what's going to happen is going to use the same name or what is what it is reading from the source and create that to CSV file. So uh, it is going to create actually .txt file. So you can always change it if you want. If you want to put double quotes around it or single quotes or no quotes, so you can always choose that as well. So it's your choice. So I'm going to just live with it, whatever it is. And now I'm going to go ahead and execute. So I'm going to hit on debug and it should run. Now it is in the queue processor. 
all good so you see that the lookup is uh, executing right now actually it's in the queue process right now so here what you have uh, your lookup executed successfully now it is used as self-hosted ir so it read the data from your local uh, uh, or your on-premises SQL Server. That's good. Let's see what it read. So it read a list of the tables that we have run. So now it went to the for each loop. In the for each loop, it says, okay, total five items it read. So five names of the tables. And now this is the first table, second, third, fourth, and fifth. So let's go and take a look. If we go here, you can see right there. And uh, this is in, uh, this is the first one. And then uh, how many rows are written? Four. Then you want to go to the next, and you can read it through, like, a, you know, all the details and everything. But, uh, you know, I really don't care reading about this whole lot here. You want to see the second one. You can see, like, how many rows it read and all. Now we can go to one of the other uh, table. We don't uh, actually, uh, some of them has 1,000, 2,000 rows. This one has 2,000 rows. So this is looking good and you can tell the throughput and everything and how much time it took to write the data and all that if you want to study about that. Now, what is happening here, we need to go to the blob storage and in the blob storage we go to container and in the container we are going to go to the input and that's where our beautiful files are which are which ha got the data from our on-premises SQL Server tables and uh, written here. So let's go to the SSIS JSON. This is a pretty big file and I'm going to click right here and now I can go to edit and take a look. So it has ID, first name, last name and all that. And remember that double quotes around each of the column. That's what we have selected. Now this is how what you will do. You will read the data from your on-premises uh, SQL Server database uh, and then write the data to the CSV files in the blob storage. I hope uh, you learn uh, all the details and will be able to create this type of pipelines in your scenario. So there are endless scenarios you can create from here. You know, you're gonna be like, let's say tomorrow, you have a list of the views that you created depending on some definitions. You can always get those lists of the views and use them to create a CSV file. You can also maybe put the list of the store procedures in the table and then read them and execute them uh, in your pipeline and create a CSV file or maybe load the data to some uh, SQL table. So tons of opportunities are there uh, to play with this and uh, migrate your data or build your ETL process. So I thank you for watching my videos and spending time with me. And please go ahead and subscribe to my channel and I will see you guys in the next video.